Welcome to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Malkin, and we are at Maker Faire in Queens, New York, on the site of the 1939 and 1964 World's Fair. And fittingly enough, we're getting a look at how some of the world's top engineers are sharing their technology, making it accessible to everyone. And we'll take a closer look in a moment. But first, these students are using their imagination to design cities of tomorrow and even giving some professional architects some inspiration for their high profile project. We check out how some of your teachers spent their summer learning a new innovative method to teach that makes you the scientist, and we spend a day at the zoo. We'll check out the science and technology behind caring for the animals in captivity and conserving their environments in the wild. All part of Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds initiative to get you interested, if not educated, in science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community. All right, back here at Maker Faire, what exactly is Maker Faire? Well, take people's inherent desire to create stuff, mix that with a little bit of technology, and you pretty much have Maker Faire. Our Agnes Chun is somewhere in this crowd. Doug Way is learning about 3D printing. It's fascinating to be able to um, go on a computer and design a 3D thing and then simply press a button and have it made for you. More than 80,000 people came to visit the exhibits at the fifth annual World Maker Fair at the New York Hall of Science. So it's like a new Bangle County Fair, so it's all technology, it's crafts, it's everything you can kind of imagine that you make yourself. 700 makers showed off their projects, many interactive. You get to build figurines and draw under a microscope. David Diao loves this electric giraffe built out of scraps. I think it's really cool how they use so much random pieces that other people would find as well. They wouldn't just use it to make a giant robotic giraffe. They can understand that if they can just put these components together, uh, really the sky is the limit when it comes to your creativity. It's just a place where I can express my feelings and just create whatever I want. Many of the visitors are creative themselves and came to meet like-minded folks. Lots of people I could talk to who speak my language, who get ex as excited as I do about all these things. It's great. Others came to explore what do-it-yourself is all about. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Agnes Chung. The hands-on experience embodied by the Maker Faire is not lost on our next group of would-be architects. Some students got the chance to put their planning skills to the test at NYU's Polytechnic School of Engineering in a workshop that at first might look like child's play. It's all about imagining the potential for tomorrow. We made a new um, efficient city. We have wind turbines, solar panels, algae lamps. You have to think like a little bit out of the box. It's called Science of Smart Cities, an NYU STEM program for seventh and eighth graders, where they get to put their ideas to the test, building Lego models of future cities. Ben Essner, director for NYU Center for K through 12 STEM education, says it gives students a real lesson in the science and engineering of urban development. Wireless technology and communications, uh, transportation, uh, and energy. And we're looking at things like renewable energy, sustainability, uh, how urban systems can be designed for better quality of life. It keeps you fresh, keeps you alive. You get to meet new people. You get to learn new things that you've never even thought about before. But these LEGO cities aren't simply toys. They demonstrate real technologies that students would like to see. The specialty of the city is our transportation system, the SMC Rail. Um, SMC Rail is good for earthquake prone cities like ours. It's an overground railroad system. I think with a little work and effort, most cities can have this technology and the earth would be a better place. A dream for the future that's creating a solid foundation for these urban architectural enthusiasts. Over the last five years, a reimagined derelict rail line has attracted millions of visitors to New York City. It's called the High Line. And now, there's a move underway to turn an abandoned trolley terminal on the Lower East Side into the world's first underground park, which will be called the Low Line. The architects in charge of the project recently asked some students what they'd like to see in this urban oasis. Our Shazia Khan has more. The proposed low-line park is a marvel of engineering and architecture, pitting the city's need for green space against its clustered streets. The park is being created as an urban getaway for residents in New York's Lower East Side, 
and designers tapped into the local student community for feedback. We're building a model of what we think the low line should look like. There are these lights that are going to like have like little bits of sunlight coming through and then it's going to like open up into the low line. The low line young designers program aims to give students an introduction to architecture and design by having them build a model of what they think the park should look like. What we also hope is that we can actually really provide real value to the kids in bringing something that helps them think about science, technology, helps them think about design and architecture. And it's clear that for students, the sky's the limit. I kind of learned that anything's possible. I learned a lot about the sun and uh, plants and such. And uh, like, it's really cool that we're kind of working on this because this is probably the easiest way to terraform something. I mean, if we're going to do this, on in the middle of the subway why can't we do it on the moon i mean come on leaving at least one student shooting for the stars for day rocket science i'm shazia khan and those young urban planners aren't alone in finding ways to make their environment work for them in austin texas some college engineers have designed a way to let today's tech obsessed teens enjoy their campus's green space our mitch goulding shows us how students are getting plugged into their parks so if you do the design like this, I what started as a class assignment to get students out in the sun has turned into a full-fledged passion for three Southwestern students. We thought everyone's always inside because that's where all the electricity and electronics are. Their solution is what they call the solar lounge, a mobile chair that provides a place to relax while plugged in. Being inside for so long, it, it reduces your productivity. Getting students outside in the sun, get a little vitamin D, and a little recharge, not only for your phone, but also for your body, you know, for your, for your mind. It's we really wanted to design something that could stand as an art piece and something functional as well. The unique design is actually based on a series of ergonomic tests to maximize comfort while working. After all day of testing, we kind of came to reach this uh, average angle of um, reclination which is what we built into the chair, and people love it. They think it's so comfortable to sit in. You can stay in there for hours. The hours of comfort also come with hours of power. If it's a perfectly sunny day and we're good, we're, we're good throughout the entire day. We hit night, we're around like five, six hours. With the basic design behind them, the students say the possibilities are endless. We're all creative minds and we just want to keep going with it. We talked about uh, having Bluetooth and uh, speakers and stuff. Uh, these are the things that you can just add on, kind of like a feature accessory. Up to 10 of these chairs are rolling out at Southwestern this fall, successfully creating a place for students to power up while still soaking in the beauty of the campus on a sunny day. For Adain Rocket Science, I'm Mitch Golding. All right, we do have to stop here for a quick break, but coming up. It's all about mentorship as we check out some of the country's most powerful women in STEM and what some of your teachers are doing to keep ahead of the curve and later, We've all spent the day at the zoo, but do you ever wonder about the care and feeding of our furry friends? We'll go behind the scenes and get the inside scoop from some professionals who take care of animals every day. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, check out connectamillionminds.com during the break.